Every year when I was like a kid for Halloween, I used to always dress, dress up as a soldier, like almost every year. I was a pretty adventurous child. Had a hard childhood growing up, uh, a lot of issues back then with my mom and um, she was into drugs and alcohol a lot. So I got taken around to a lot of different places. My mom did take me out a lot, uh, going up to the mountains and hiking. I've always been adventurous. I've always liked to do dangerous stuff that's always just been kind of me, so. It was about two years after I graduated and I was working kind of two dead-end jobs and I was like, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere and I've always wanted to. So I just was like, I want to go enlist. But I was in the Army for 11 years, rejoined in 2003 right after 9-11. I was deployed twice. The end of 2005 was when we left again and that time we went up to Baghdad and I was there for about six months. And then on November 27th, 2006 was when I was injured. It started off like any day. We had a mission that we were prepping for, for that night. A loud explosion happened. And so I knew exactly what happened, we were hit. I, was like, I didn't know the extent though. I, said, I didn't feel any pain. The whole time I didn't even see any blood. Something inside of me just told me, you're hurt and I knew that I had to get out of the striker and get to the back hatch. I got out of my seat, and that's as far as I got. Uh, I started to black, black out. As I was blacking out, I think that was, that was the most intense feeling I think I've ever felt. It was, it was a sense of dread. It was a sense of like, you're dying, and there's nothing that you can do to stop it. My right leg was instantly gone. My left leg, I guess, was still there, but it was pretty, ba pretty badly damaged. I woke up the next time with my whole platoon in my room. He was sitting on my bed, and um, he couldn't look at me. He was just staring down the, the, the old time. I knew this was the last time that I was going to see these guys. This was the last time that I was going to be a part of this, and it was really hard. And, the recovery process was long and hard. It wasn't easy. I spent probably three or four months at Walter Reed, and those were some pretty tough times. It was painful. I was going through a lot of pain. I dealt with a lot of different emotions during that time. A lot of anger, a lot of, a lot of what ifs. As a soldier, you're always taught to suck it up and drive on. You're always taught to push it down. The mission comes first. It's instilled in you years of conditioning and training. You go through this stuff and you go through all these emotions and you just push it down. You don't deal with it. That's when I started to talk about my, my story and what I went through. And the more that I have talked about it, the less that it affects me. I've done a lot of things that, you know, if you look at me, you're like, there's no way. But I just do it, you know? And so I, I want to show people that it's, it is possible. Always been into hiking, I mean, ever since I was a kid. Running the Army, we were outside all the time. It was like camping 24-7 whenever we're out in the field. So it just has always been a part of me. Being up here is, it's quiet. It's just you and the mountain. I definitely think climbing helps with the recovery process. Anything that gets you out and doing stuff that's away from your problems helps you cope with your issues because you're focused on this instead of the stuff that's back back home. I've you know done Tough Mudders, I've done Spartan races, hiked up the you know Pikes Peak, Manitou Incline. It was tough, it was hard and there were many times that you sit and you think like why the hell am I doing this you know and like or I'm not too far, I can just stop now and just go back. I love to push myself. I love to like keep going. I always find it amazing how your mind can like make it to where you can just push through the, the pain. And I get a lot of feedback from veterans that I've inspired them. I get a lot of messages, random messages from people that say, I saw that video and that made me reach out to some of my friends and work through it. And that's, you know, that kind of stuff and those kind of stories inspire me to keep pushing because I know that I'm doing, 
I'm doing something that is inspiring people and I'm doing something that is hopefully helping people, you know, and that's, that's what drives me and pushes me to keep, to keep going. I believe that there comes a point in your recovery process that you have to make a choice to either live and live good or just let the P PTSD and everything else run your life. You have to move forward and you have to progress forward or else you're never going to heal. I like to challenge myself. I like to push myself. So if I can find new challenges, and I'll just do it. You know, I mean, you never know where your life's going to take you. So you just got to deal with your issues and your problems and kind of roll with it. You know, it happened. There's nothing you can do to change it. The best thing that you can do is try and make it the best possible life that you can. Um, do what makes you happy. Honestly, <laughs> there are no limits to anything that you can do. If you can think of it, it can be done.